Welcome everybody back to the co Waco. Guess what? We in the building. And remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Oh, and also to let you all know that we're not financial advisors. So this is for educational purposes only. So just gotta mention that to you all. This is true. Um, this is true. Educational purposes only, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. That you all can be able to actually, you know, learn from, put it in action, in action, so you get some results. All right. All right. So first on our list for today, we're going to actually talk about preparing for the market whenever it goes on discount. I know you like discounts, yes, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, we love in discounts. Man, yeah. so look, Leroy, I'm going to jump right in. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Leroy, the sensei, I appreciate you as always. Market discounts. Whenever oh, we have he's a grandmaster sensei. He's, well, he's I mean, grand, listen, listen. Chris is grand. I do what I can. Right. I do what I can. I do what I can. When we are approaching situations like what we are now, where recession seems inevitable, if you have money on the side, and it doesn't even have to be a whole lot, you don't have to have 10,000, 25,000, 50, 100,000. If you've got $500 on the side, $1,000 on the side, be ready to put that, and you can invest that money. Be ready to put that money in the market in times like now when good companies, the top companies, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Tesla, Square, Walmart, all of these companies, Home Depot, Nike, are about to go on sale. Wait for those companies to fall 20, 25, 30%. Put your money in there. Don't change your micro investing that you're doing. Don't change the investing that you're doing every week, every couple of weeks, every year. Don't change that. Okay. Still keep doing that, but make this make this that that big push. If you've been putting money on the side, let's say maybe your savings account, or you've been putting money, even if you've been putting money in a shoebox, that's okay. Your money is gaining interest, right? If I put five dollars in my shoebox every week, okay, for that first week, that's a hundred percent. Now the week after that, that's 50, you know what I mean? Like it'll go down. But I'm still putting, when that money stops matching a good amount of interest, then, you know, get to invest. I mean, but if I'm being, if you have $1,000 in the shoebox, the next week you put 1000 in there, the next week you put 2000 in there, the next week you put 4000 in there, every week you, you know, 100% and, you, you know, you're doubling your money, so 200%. Hey, do that, right? But if you don't have that, available and let's say you saved up a thousand dollars over the past four months the past six months and you look at somewhere to put it now is your time to look to put it in the stock market quadruple witching we talked about that i believe our very first episode which is the day when so you've got expirations that expire um bonds the fed there's there's a lot that happens on that day um, and again, we're not financial. We just, we figuring it out with y'all. So my apologies for not having done the whole research before presenting this to you, but there are moments throughout the year where it's prime to invest, which is really every day, but key moments where either large amounts of money are going into the market or large amounts of money are coming out of the market. Okay. So look for those moments. It was, it was, I know it was December. March, what was it, July and September? Yes, yeah, so I believe March, I believe so. March. Um June. June. Okay. September and December. Right. And December, right, right. Four times quarterly, so four times every year. But when that happens, get ready. And then I mean it's looking like recession is inevitable because the growth has been tremendous over these past couple of years. And it's been, this has been uh, a propagated growth 
money has just been money has been printing. Okay, just printing, 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 printing. An easing of that has to happen, right? A slowing down of that has to happen. A correction in market terms has to happen. So in times like this, prepare. Hey, I got a thousand dollars. I got five hundred dollars. I got whatever. I have whatever amount of money, and I want to put it somewhere. When those companies that you hear about, oh, well, Tesla's down to seven fifty or eight hundred. That you that should not make you nervous. That should make you very, very, very happy. Okay. I was talking with a colleague of mine earlier about home foreclosures and that not making the news. Well, why would it? Because if you're actually paying attention to the real estate market, you would know that and you would know that it's about time to get into real estate as well. But in terms of the stock market, that 30% off that you're gonna get, boom. As soon as you sit, I mean. All of the great investors say it, mark your interest, mark your entries. You mark your entry, you're good. If the high for a company was $200 and you mark your entry at 160 and the company goes to 160, get in there, right? That's that discount, boom, get in there. If you mark it at 150, 145, whatever, get in there. Good, sound, quality company, great management will be here in the future provides something, so solves a problem that no other company is good as, as good at solving as they are, boom, not a whole lot of debt, making money, you know, research and development is fantastic, put your money in there. And don't get greedy. Uh, if a company is like, let's say, I mean, listen, everybody would invest if Tesla was 60% off, right? Like, it would be nerve wracking, but you know, in like five, 10 years, you're gonna make your money back 10, 20, 30 fold. So when you make, when you're looking at, but you're looking at a solid company, a good company, right? You're looking at a company that's gonna be here and it provides a solution to a problem that a lot, hundreds of millions of people have. So don't get greedy and go, oh, well, you know, my entry is 30% on. I'm going to wait till it get to 40. I'm going to wait till it get to 50. Like once your tar once your mark appears, boom, you hit it. You're in the market. You're good. He's right. And whenever you start getting that greedy, whenever you're actually being greedy, you're going to regret. So just like he mentioned, yeah. just don't, don't get greedy, you know. Right. Um, if you have I mean, because think about it. If you mark a target at 30% off, and it gets to 30, but you want to wait till it gets to 40. And then it goes back up. So now it's only 25% off and then 20. You're going to regret, like Leroy just said, you're going to regret not getting in at that 30% off. 20% off is still not bad, but you got greedy. And you wanted to get 35, 40, so you didn't put your money in. Go ahead and put your money in at the target you marked. Right. And, and if you like, I mean, you can nibble. You can uh, put, you know, you don't have to put the full amount in, you know, right then. You can put maybe like, you know, at least some in, and then you can see how it performs. And then you can, you know, oh, okay, I'm going to put some more in. Kind of like ease into it um, also too. Because uh, I always uh, think it's good to be able to kind of like test the waters. Um, if you have a target, you know, you don't have to go full force, basically, and putting all of it in at that target. You can put maybe like some in again, and then okay, it is actually meeting my target, what I actually have wanted to, you know, meet. Okay, then you go and put the rest in, or you can put like I don't know another portion in. Um, also, too, because we even talk about that even before with the micro investing, always kind of starting you know, little by little um, by testing the waters and putting little in and then you putting more in. Um, I just want to also make sure to mention that too. Yeah, nibbling. I like that. I like put a nibble. That's good. That's good. Yeah, 
No. A food reference. I should use those more, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, you know, because you always expect the big guy to use food references, right? So I should you I should use what? those more. But I be thinking, I look, I don't be thinking about that though. I just be like, yo, look, get you in the market, get in the market, get in the market, right? But nibbling. I like that. Look, we talked about soda in the last episode. And then we talked about uh, I, I, I could have sworn I mentioned the pie. So I think I'm doing a good job. I'm doing it. I'm representing for the good fellas. I, all right. All right. I think I'm good. I think I'm holding us down. But yeah, that's that. You know what, Levi? That's actually a good suggestion, too, because if I have $2,500 that I'm looking to invest, if I put in 500 of that when a good company goes, is 20% off. And 20% off of a high, let's just say not, not 20% off just in general, but 20% off of a high. And I put 500 in and then that company goes to 30% off of a high and I put 1,000 in and then it goes back up to 20%, right? And then it gains that 10% that it lost and it just runs from there. I'm not talking about this happening in a day, right? Or this happening in a week. I'm saying, you know, this week is 20%, it's between 18 and 22% off. And then it stays that way for a few weeks. And then at the end of the month, it goes down even more. And it's 28 to 32% off. And I get it right at, you know, 30.5 or 30.75% off. And then it stays that way for a few weeks. And then a couple weeks after that, it starts climbing. And now it gains a percent or two and gains five or 10%, falls back down. But, but then it slowly starts to do what the market has done. And it creeps all, you know. And so now, a few months later, three months later, four months later, I'm like, okay, you know, I got in at 30.75% off a few months ago. And from there, it's been uphill from here, even though I started getting in when it was 20% off, 20 point whatever percent off. But I still dollar cost average down in that. And now my asset is growing. So I do, I, I like that though. I like that. You know, hey, this might be, this might be all right. It's 20% off. Let me put some money in and then, you know, whatever, you know, and it's not, that's not being greedy because your target is still 30%. So you still mark that 30%, but then you might say, okay, maybe, maybe you don't want to miss out. Maybe you think something might happen and you get in with a 20% off. Cool, fine. But you still mark that target for 30. And then when 30 happens, you can either pour all your money in it or you put a significant portion in and then watch your ass that grow. But I do like, I like that idea. Yeah. Also too, um, when he was talking about, you know, like as you're waiting, you can also put like alerts, you know, to alert yourself. So you don't have to be constantly like looking at the market, like, Oh, what's going to do? Oh, what's going to do? But if you have those alerts in, it alerts you. Oh, okay. Then I can be able to take a, you know, look, Oh, okay. Then you can kind of make a decision, you know, on if you're going to put, you know, more in. And if you're waiting for another target, just put that alert on there. And then, like, you kind of, it'll kind of take your mind off of, you know, constantly looking, you know, at the market, you know, because you, you'll be busy doing things and, like, it'll be kind of like, you know, time is after you pass. And then once you get that alert, it um, kind of kick you, you know, in, you already, you haven't been worrying about what's going on, you know, within the market, you know, um, but the alerts, I think, um, plays an important part also to kind of help you out, you know, take care, I'm sorry, but it kind of help you out and guide you, you know, where you just won't have that anxiety of constantly looking, you know, at the market. Um, also, too, we want to mention yeah. that. Mm -hmm. All right, so guess what's next, you all? We're going to talk about some financial news, you know, basically yeah, yeah. how um, that plays a part of you actually, you know, paying attention, you know, to that. Chris, mm -hmm. what you got to say yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah. So that, so quick little excerpt on that. It's important to pay attention to financial news, judicial news, legislative news, anything having to do with politics on a national level, on a local level, or a national level, a state level, and on your local level. Let's go biggest to smallest. 
So it's always important to pay attention to those because, yeah, you can pay attention to the financial news and what the Federal Reserve is doing, but pay attention to the amount of money your local municipality or your county is giving to small businesses or giving to entrepreneurs or giving to families. And those that will indicate to you, okay, if I live in a county that's hostile towards entrepreneurs, which I don't know a county that is because all counties want as much business as possible. But let's say you live in the rare county that's hostile towards entrepreneurs. And it's not a benefit for you to be an entrepreneur in that town. If you know that you have business ideas in that town, but that town doesn't favor you, and you have to move, or county, my apologies, and you have to move to another county, that's going to significantly impact the amount of money that people pour into that county and the amount of money that people invest, right? If I live in a county that's pro-entrepreneur, I'm probably going to have more people in that county more financially aware one, but then two, they're also going to be more knowledgeable about proper investments and the right investments, right? And because that's the case, you want to pay attention to what's going on in monetary news, but you also want to pay attention to what's going on in legislative and judicial news. So if we look at something like the student loan forgiveness a topic that is very pressing and will be for a while until it's figured out. I mean, I can only imagine, and, and you know, we'll let the sensei go on this, but I can only imagine what it would mean if all student loan debt is forgiven. This is what I think. And then I, because I got to get your opinion on this. This is what I think. It'll go one of two ways. If all student loan debt is forgiven, people will just go right back into debt of a different kind, okay? Be it mortgages, uh, be it outlandish vehicles and trips. Um, and I feel like most of us, I feel like most millennials would get out of debt just to go back in debt to travel the world and see the world, right? Or the second thing would happen is people would hoard their money and would never, I mean, they would be so scared of debt, they would never go into it again. And then everybody will be charging 20 and 30% on borrowed money. That's what I think would happen. So you got one of those two situations. What, what is your opinion though? Because I'm like, I mean, of course we all wanted to be forgiven, but you, in my understanding, We'll either go into debt of a different kind and more. We'll go into debt of a different kind of a higher amount. So let's say you've got, let's say you went to med school, you got $250,000 in debt. The government clears that. I feel like that same individual, whoever he or she is, will go back into debt, $300,000 in debt, because they want to hit every single country on the planet and they want to travel the world before it's all said and done and they're going to rack up $300,000. Or they are not going to spend a penny and it's, it's going to be like pulling teeth with these people. So like, how, how do you feel about it? Though? All right. So this is my take on it. Yeah. <laughs> so if that actually happens, right. Uh, if, if our loans are forgiven, right. Loans, student loans have a big effect on credit. All right, so check this out. If your student loans are actually forgiven, this, this is my opinion, people that were trying to actually improve their credit, that will actually help them to be able to actually raise their credit scores. Okay. So now, listen, you all. Just listen. If this happened, I want you all to take advantage of the credit world, okay? Well, what I mean is when I say take advantage, I mean like take advantage to 
the business side of things to the point where you can be able to actually, you know, borrow money to be able to make money, okay? Not borrow money to go back into debt <laughs> or use your credit to, to, to leverage. So, look, let's say like, for example, if you uh, want to actually use credit to be able to like, um, you know, start up a business and you got this credit that you have where you can get, I don't know, $50,000, let me use this for example. And to be able to actually start up this business, you know, you're only gonna use 25,000, all right? So you, 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 you basically taking out the 25,000 out of that 50,000 that you actually borrowed and you still got 25,000 actually left um, that you be able to actually use. And then to the point where your business, that you're on the grind, as you're building your business, right? Let's say like nine months, you know, you into profit. Over nine months, let's say like you actually got into profit, like, I don't know, like 150,000. So you use 25,000, right? And you still have 25,000 left, but you actually made 150,000. So paying back that, um, that money that you actually borrowed is a breeze. Okay, you got a profit, and plus you still got money that you can be able to, you know, um, still use. But but you stay. I mean, you paid back the twenty five thousand um, that you have borrowed. Re really, the fifty thousand that you borrowed, you have profit actually left, and then you can be um, repeat it again. You know, but that, that's just my take on it. Just make sure right. you be able to actually use it to your advantage, not in the way of where you you being able to use it to go back into debt like bad a bad way, but use it to where you can leverage yourself to be able to actually you know move yourself forward because this is also going to be able to help your family out too, your niece and nephews. Uh, you know, yeah. your friends, your kids, kids, yeah. Yeah. and you can be able to, um, and just by you actually doing that, your children would even see that and see how, oh, okay, this is how credit is supposed to be used. So that is my okay. spell on it. Okay. So what you're saying is you're saying if you get all the way out of that debt, borrow, because you're now in good standing with your credit borrow don't go into the same amount of debt but borrow and have the potential to go into debt go into a smaller debt but use that for business ventures become an entrepreneur basically as a result of having good credit is what you're saying yeah yeah okay okay i mean definitely become an entrepreneur now for everybody like definitely no matter where your credit is because you know, when you form an LLC or an S corporate secret, all of that is separate of your own personal ventures that you have. So your credit on your personal end doesn't determine your business, that business credit, personal credit, two different things. But I see, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. So you're saying if all of the, all the loans are forgiven, use that good credit to get a substantial amount of money, but not too large, start a business you know, and then work hard enough so that six, nine, 12 months, you're making 150000 to, and you have the money to cover that debt. So yeah, then or, you can keep pouring it back into your business. Yes. Or, or I mean, you'll be able to actually use the credit also to, to be able to, you know, um, like we're looking to be able to purchase a house, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like how he was talking about going on these uh, trips, <laughs> make sure you use it. Make sure you use it wisely because you can add up, you know, like points to be able to actually yeah. use. You know, as you go on these particular trips, it's like you're not really right. paying for them. You got you got points. You actually racked up. Right. Know? 
Um, and make them business trips too. Make them make some business where you're going so you can write those trips off. Like, hey, I'm going to Hawaii, but I'm going to Hawaii to have business meetings with so you know so on and so on with whatever company, and then keep those receipts. So when you have to prove that, you can say, yes, I was in Hawaii for a week meeting with these many people because it's the because you're incentivized. I know on a federal level, and like I said, I, it was it's, it's difficult to find an example of a county that doesn't promote business, but on a county level, on a state level, and a federal level. The uh, the attempt to grow your business is also tax deductible. Hey, I went to Hawaii. We have we'll have to see how long it takes from now till whenever for my business to start growing and developing. And in the meantime, I'm gonna need that money back that I spent, you know, on dinner or that I spent at the hotel or you know that we spent meeting on the airline tickets and so on and so forth. So okay, but I, I like that. I rock with I rock with what you said using that. Getting smart about your money once you're out of debt. Yes. Even Be if you smart have to, about the money now. Right. Even <laughs> if you have to put in some time, whatever, you know, like taking some classes or something like that, you yeah. know, just um, hang yeah. around people that have that same mindset. Just True. don't, um, you got to kind of like just stop and think this, uh, take advantage in yeah. like a good way you know yeah 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 of course um so that is my take yeah. on it. Um, no that's true i mean definitely go to platforms that are more advanced definitely go to and, and take classes from financial advisors i mean definitely talk with cfps uh, your local cfps because they are certified so this is their job Right. So seek them out first. I mean, and it's free. It, uh, email is free. An email costs you nothing. So, I mean, even if you have to get in contact with your county tax office so they can direct you in the right direction, do that. You could go on the private side and, you know, go to YouTube and your EYLs and your Wall Street Trappers and all of the dope, great resources. But start where you live get in contact with the tax county, you know, with the county office, get in contact with your local government where you live and say, hey, look, I'm looking, you know, or reach out to a CFP in your area. Hey, I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for someone who is certified that can help me with this. Cool. Boom. And go from there. Um, even if you're, I mean, Investopedia is a great platform uh, for terms. If you want to find out, well, what is a dividend? What is a portfolio? What is this? Use these web resources that will allow you to at least understand the basics. And then you can go and sit in front of, you know, uh, of the, the 401k director or someone responsible for a 401k at your company. Start there. Wherever you work, if you are a W-2 employee, start with your employer if you have a good rapport with them and a good relationship. You know, reach out to the investment uh, department. Hey, I got a question about this. I got a question about that. If they don't give you the answers, reach out to certified financial planners. That's the CFP I mentioned. Reach out to your tax office. All of these things are free. The classes are what, you know, once you get into the private sector, or once you get into the guys who are for profit, these are going to cost you. But you have so many free options available to you before that. You may not need to go to those private resources, or when you do, it's it's the, the risk is more calculated. Mm. So when you look at everyone before in the public sphere, this is gonna be a more conservative, you know, probably a more blue chip type approach, but you can take more risk and really get into the weeds going private or even doing the digging in the public sector because you have to report it publicly, you know, especially talking about publicly traded companies. So take advantage of those opportunities. All right. So now Chris has a surprise ETL. <laughs> yes. Yes. The, the yes. So look. Here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I don't. Okay. I, 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 
I don't know what ETF it is. (laughs) You don't. You don't. So and here's the thing. I didn't know. So if you have, you got your computer up or your laptop, because if you do have that open, if not, that's okay. But if you have your your computer open or your laptop open, Leroy, the ETF I'm talking about is CARS, C-A-R-Z. I just heard about it from another financial channel. And I wanted to bring it up to you because it's not what you think it is. So it's not just investment in car companies. It's not just Ford, GM, Toyota, Honda, Volkswagen, and that's it. It's actually a automo- it's an automotive and future technology autonomous vehicle company. It's, it's almost like the... Um, it's almost like the Arc W or the Arc Q, the autonomous Arc portfolio, uh, whichever one that is that deals with that. But inside of this ETF, mm-hmm. Toyota is in there, but Toyota is doing some great things. Uh, Daimler is in there. They also have Apple in there. They have Microsoft in there. They have companies inside of this ETF that are not only focused on automation of vehicles but the technology that will provide that automation. So I didn't oh know, and you know, Leroy. Yeah, listen, Leroy is the ETF guy. So I was, I, I, and I just heard this. I was like, oh man, this is, and, and, and the holdings in this company, I was like, this might be a good investment. Like this might, I mean, I think it, that when I checked, it was like, it was almost 5% in Apple, almost 5% in Microsoft. It was, um, I, I believe Toyota was a higher percentage. But see, Toyota is a very, very popular vehicle and very, very fuel efficient. And they've been that way for a long time. Uh, if you don't know, Toyota started off as a sewing company. They used to make sewing machines. So the fine details, they're good at. They can, they can, they, they're able to break stuff down. But I wanted to bring that up to you because I was like, this might be an ETF that you might like. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to I'm about to say the detail right now. So it has yeah. Tesla in here for one for the top. I believe so. Yes. Oh, oh you, you see it now. Oh, you see it. Okay, now. You're looking at it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. So Tesla is the top. It weighs five percent in it. Nvidia is the next one. Apple is next. Uh, Google is in this one. Intel. They got Samsung in here. He mentioned Toyota. It has Quad Quadcom in here. It has oh Qualcomm, uh, yeah, that's right. It's Microsoft is not in there, right? It was it's Google, not Microsoft. Oh well, yeah, Google is uh, in the top. Google, 10, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Um, I I mixed the two up. Uh, tai, Taiwan semiconductors in here too. TSM, yes, sir. And also um, AMD. Wow. In this one. So they got. And it's trading at 50 something, right? 51, 52 bucks? Yeah, it's trading at uh, $53.34. It was just trading at $51 yesterday. (laughs) Just yesterday when I checked it. So they already up almost $2. Yeah, I mean, but that's why I said, let me bring this to you because it might be worth it. Uh, you know, so I, let me bring this to the Sensei ET, since ETF Sensei. Let me see what the master has to say about that. Bring that to you uh, because that might be a good, and like I said, I got that. I mean, in, in full transparency, I got that from Dr. Boyce Watkins' financial channel. He was answering questions. You know, he's been a, a financial, he's been in finance for over two decades. So he knows this. This is his lane. And one of the uh, one of the questions asked was, "How do you feel about this?" So I was like, "Maybe on our platform here, we can wave people in the door, and I can ask what my uh, you know what my doorway partner thinks about cars." So all of those companies in there. I mean, I forgot about Nvidia and Qualcomm. Yeah, yeah that was uh, an AMD. Yeah, so they actually have one, two, three, four, five. They have five um, chip companies in here. Um, yeah, because NVIDIA is a chip company, Intel, 
Um, quad Palm. Uh, Tai Taiwan Semiconductor and AMD. <clears throat> so these are all, and then ah, can't see they got the Tesla in there, Apple. So this is a those companies are pretty good, but <clears throat> those companies are really good, but not just actually just looking at the companies though. Um, you know, like even if you're looking at the chart. Um, on this particular company, right? Uh -huh. So it seems like this company took off. That, what, what, what is this? Oh, okay, so back in last year no two years ago uh, march during the pandemic after the pandemic like uh since march 31 2020 it's been uphill for this um this etf mm. like uphill like after that pandemic yeah. thing right. it have not come back down like oh, it wow. shot up yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this might be one. That's why I said this might be one of the ones. So my gift to you. Uh, yeah, I'll give to you all. <laughs> the gift. The gift. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. That. That. Yeah. That's okay. All right. Yeah. So definitely yeah. keep your eyes on that one for sure. For sure. Yeah. I, ne I never heard that one before. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, I had to put that on my uh my uh watch list for sure. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So okay. that was uh like I said, okay. that's that's for me. I try. Yeah. I'm here, I'm here to serve. I'm here. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> that's it. My my job is to help you. That way I can go to the beach and relax, kick it with my feet up. Sip and lemonade. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Family good. Kids good. Nieces, nephews, uncles, aunts, cousins, mama, daddy, siblings. Y'all good? All right, cool. I'm headed to the beach. <laughs> All right. I'm going to the beach. That's what's up, man. Oh, yeah, man. man. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah that's, a, that's a good one. And and plus, um, yeah, over the course of the quarters for this particular one since um, 2020, third quarter, it's been like on the uphill for this particular ETF. Yeah. Like, I mean, and I expect for it to keep going up just because the individual companies that are in there are so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have, you know, five, four or five percent of each. But I mean, again, what we have, you know, seemingly we got a recession on the way. That might be a good one to look at if it takes a little dip. Mark your entry, get in there, boom, you know, and set it and forget it. Just that constant investment. Like you said, when you go in and you mark your targets, you don't have to put all of it in there. You know, you just nibble a little bit. But this is definitely one of the ones I was like, yeah, this might be for sure, for sure. Uh, I didn't check market cap, but I did check the companies that were in there. Impressed. Impressed. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> so mark that one on y'all list. Mm -hmm. All right, so you got any um, stock picks? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sneak that one in. I'm going to sneak cars in as my fourth. But I'm going to go with Amazon, Google, and Apple. Apple just because I think once, I mean, Apple might go, you know, you know may go down 20 to 30%. Because I'm, I'm, I'm marking my entry for Apple this week um, for this, this impending recession. Uh, Amazon is going to do their stock split, I believe, next month. And then Google shortly after that in July. 
uh, or it could be the reverse, but whichever one, but I'm gonna go with Amazon, Apple, and Google. Okay. Proving companies, you know, and even with the news with Amazon and, you know, um, talks of a union and everything and that, uh, Amazon is still a good company. I mean, it's, I mean, I get, listen, I'm just repeating what all the financial experts say in this garage with this lighting on the side. I'm just saying the same thing they're saying. I'm using uh, different pitches and octave, all of that. But Amazon for sure. Amazon for sure. I'm really, really excited about that because I really want Amazon to get down to like 150, 140. And after the split, and then, you know, boom, right in there. Because it'll run up very, very quickly after that. The Amazon, Apple, and Google. All right, so um, I am going to go with um, Pepsi, FedEx, and um, let's see how you pronounce this, C-I-N-T-A-S. Oh, the technology company, right? What do they do? do they do no, software? no, no. This, this is not the technology security. company, I don't think. Centos. What is that? That's security, right? Home security? Centis. Oh, so was that a cell phone company? What is that? Centis. So, you know, every time when we actually, you see centers inside of like um, buildings with like um, the emergency um, box thing where it has like all like the um, first aid kit stuff in there, tablets, right. um, Tylenol. They're kind of like in the kind of like health, well, emergency uh, type stuff. Um, okay. Let me see what else they're actually into. Um, uh, let's see. Also, I feel like I see in there. What's the, their logo? Was like an orange sun. What's their logo? It's actually a. Um, it's actually like a a C. Okay. okay. Um, let me see. Hold on. Syntax, okay. Let me uh, pull this up real quick. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that seems, okay, that's a cool, so they do healthcare. That means they'll be in the same run as Honeywell and 3M if they're inside of the emergency kits or uh, near the exits. That means they run in that same cohorts of companies that do that but um yes yeah, census okay that's that look i look i know you i knew you was gonna pick pepsi i knew you was gonna pick fedex but then you <laughs> throw a curveball in there oh man you threw a curve in there yeah let me see let me make sure i'm spelling right it's c-a-s and it took us some is c t a S. C T A S. Okay. And their stock right now is like four hundred and one dollars and three cents. Mm, okay. Uh, dividends yeah. or no? Uh, let's see. Dividends. Their dividends is like uh. Yep, they got dividends. Um, like three hundred. Okay. I'll say three hundred. Three dollars and eighty cents. Okay. I was like, man, look, $400 investment for $300 dividends. Uh, I'm doing that now. Jeez. Man. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm trying so to go a little less than 1%. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, 0.5. They killed it on, yeah. their, okay. on their first quarter. Um, okay. They killed it. Like, um, yeah. way over. And see, I think the reason why is that because places started to open back up too. Mm -hmm. 
and people kind of going back into the office a little bit. Yep. Um, I'm trying to get down to their uh, description thing. I don't have the details. Okay. Here. So they are in the, oh, they're actually in the industrial um, sector. My, my favorite. I only keep up with one, but yes. <laughs> I love the it. I love the industrial sector altogether, but Caterpillar is my favorite, so I keep up with what they do. But yeah, uh, cool. Boeing and Raytheon. So yeah, they're in the industrial sector. Uh huh. They actually, um, and they mainly deals with like businesses. Yeah, okay. They're actually dealing with their um, with their particular company. Let's see here. And it's not pulling up at the moment. <clears throat> okay. So they deal. So they just have, um, they just do corporate. So you couldn't have them. I wonder if you could have them for a small mom and pops then. You know, they probably, no, nah, they probably do way larger than that. They'll probably send you somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Um, so they actually also deal with like uh, it operates through like uniform rental and facility um, okay. services, first aid and safety services. Uh, so that's that's their main thing. So they deal with uniform rental, facility yeah. services, first aid and safety services. And, okay. in the and it doesn't say anything in there about cyber security or not. Why do I, what's the cybersecurity company that starts with a C? It's out there. I wonder if it's Centros. I don't know. You okay, that is, it's one. Yeah, because I thought that's what Centros did. I thought they did. I'm th you know what? I'm thinking CenturyLink. My fault. I'm thinking CenturyLink. That's what it is. Okay. And that's the uh, telecommunications company. Okay, scratch that, scratch that. Okay, so they work with industrials. Uh, and they, you said uniform rental, and what else was it? Uniform rental, facility services, first aid, safety uh, services, and uh, they 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 mainly rent out like uniforms for companies, uh, other garments, um, clothing, mat, mops, you name it, um, towels. And see, like I said, like with stuff kind of opening back up, see, this particular stock right here is in that business um, industrial sec sec section where stuff, where basically businesses are going to start actually, you know, um, going back and dealing with them because of basic companies kind of opening back up. So they're going to start renting, you know, from them again. Because people are kind of still going back into work. Uh, first aid right, play right. a part because people are going back into those buildings, you know. So right. they are in the in those spaces where they're dealing with like large companies. Um, and so mm -hmm. that's why I want to put that particular um, stock on people's um, radar. Right. And that's one of the stocks I actually invest in myself, where like I put a okay. little in each week. Bam, in there. Yeah. Bam, in there. Bam. Every week. That micro investing, yeah. Yeah, man. That's it. That's the one. Okay. Centos. Okay. I like that. So Pepsi, check it out. FedEx. Centos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right. All right, you all. Well, this was a good one, Leroy. This was a good one. And we'll see y'all on the next one. Remember, the code. Yes, code. sir. Like. Subscribe. Company one cool. Till next time, y'all. Comment. All right.